Hi engineers, in this video today we're going to be talking about traction. So if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. I really appreciate all of the comments that I see you guys put through. It really, really just helps me because I sometimes I'm not sure if I should keep doing these videos and it's really nice to see the nice comments and I really hope they're helping you guys. And if you really want anything else out of Ninja Nerd, you should head over to ninjanerd.org. That's where we have all of our notes and illustration for every lecture that we put up here on YouTube. But let's get started with traction. So when we talk about traction, we're actually talking about a mechanism of force. And essentially what traction is, it's, it's a pulling force that's going to allow bones to be realigned, essentially. It's what the main purpose is for nursing and in the NCLEX. And for traction, it's not necessarily a big topic, but it's a topic that you might not see maybe in your clinicals, you might not see much um, in school, a couple questions here or there, and then you're gonna get to your NCLEX or you're gonna start prepping for your NCLEX and you're like, I keep seeing things about Buck's traction and like, what, what the heck is that? Like, I don't understand, I've never seen it before, what is that? So I thought I'd just make this video to help clear up a couple of those questions and show you it's not as difficult as it sounds once someone kind of just like explains it to you. So traction, like I said, is a pulling force that helps maintain alignment or it helps us to realign something. So essentially what we have right here is a bone and this bone is fine, it's together. It's a very simple uh, diagram here. And then we have a break in the bone and once we have a break, imagine all around the bone we have all those tendons, right? We have um, a bunch of muscles that are connected to different points, right? And all of those tendons and muscles are gonna do what they're supposed to be doing, which is pulling and moving and stuff. And when they do that, it can cause this shift, right? So now we have a bone that's originally usually aligned, and now it's been a break and there's been a movement and now it's kind of like locked like this and we get an x-ray and we're like ooh that's a broken bone that, that's what we thought was going on and we're going to need to realign it. What traction does is it allows us to pull a force here and a force here. So just picture in your head for now we have this bone that's now unaligned right and we're going to create a little bit of traction and force and it's going to help release that tension by creating opposite force and putting back into place. Sometimes we mainly have to do that by pushing and doing things and we usually sedate the patient, but essentially it is to purposely realign and create some opposite forces, right? And when we have traction, one of the big things that we wanna look for is the prescription that the doctor ordered. So it's gonna be the type of traction that we're gonna need, it's gonna be the amount of weight or another word that you can use for this is force right, that we're gonna need in order to put this traction and use this traction. And then when can it be removed? Can it be removed when the patient wants to roll over? Can it be removed when we're gonna do a, a bed bath or ha does it have to stay on the entire time? So the whole purpose of traction is to get that realignment in order to hopefully get this bone reset and then possibly get surgery if the patient needs surgery. And there's a couple different types we're gonna talk over really quickly. One of them is these right here, these are finger traps. Uh, have you ever seen them before? Basically, if you've ever played with the little Chinese finger traps or the thing you put your two fingers in and it gets like stuck kind of pulls. Finger traps, usually you take these three middle fingers and you put them in these traps and they kind of go over your fingers. And then it helps dangle the hand so that the wrist or any part of the forearm here can be realigned. So what we do is we put these fingers into the trap. We do manual weight right here. So sometimes it's um, leader bags, sometimes it's um, uh, weights that the hospital has and they're able to pull traction so we have a force pulling here and a force on this arm that's pulling down so as the patient sits right we're going to have this force here pulling down a force here pulling up it's going to help realign that bone for us okay so we have this right here that can be manual it can also be temporary, so a temporary type of traction. Then we'll put the splint on while that patient is there re um, being realigned. Put that splint on and then be able to re-x-ray, see if everything's been set up, and then we're able to let our patient go home. Sometimes you need something that's a little more continuous or straight. So we have a straight here. This one is the one that usually the NCLEX likes to hit on. This one is our Bucks traction here, which is when they're in this shoe type thing and their foot, their legs in it with their feet pointing up to the ceiling. Patients usually laying type of supine and then they have a pulley system and this pulley system has the weights at the other side and it's creating that force from the bottom of the foot. So if the patient's laying, their body weight and their hip is basically 
sh showing force this way, so their body's weight is this way, making this force, and their traction is this way with this weight and pulley system. And then there's a couple other ones. There's one's called Bryant, which we use for pediatric patients in order to help realign their hips, which is when the patients lay on their back and their hips, their feet are up, and they're actually being brought up over their um, head through a pulley system so that the legs are up into the air. So we're able to reset those hips. And there's a bunch of other different types, but these are the ones that usually you're going to hear most about, especially Buck's traction. But the whole goal is to understand what the purpose is, and it's that realignment. So let's talk about how we essentially assess these patients, and then what are we going to do for their patient education as well. All right, engineers, so when we move into assessing our patient, we want to start thinking about what's going on with our patient, right? They have traction, they've had a broken bone, um, they maybe had a compound fracture, maybe there was some skin opening. So there's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of straps, there's a lot of pulleys, there's a lot of weights. And then even with some patients that might even have some pins going in, if we really are going to get technical or they have ones that are going up around their head to hold their cervical spine. And we want to then take a step back and think, okay, this patient's got a lot going on, but what is the main focus of my assessment? We're always going to do a head to toe assessment, but then what are the things that we need to focus on as nurses and, and also the NCLEX is going to hit on that are really the most like pertinent points of this type of uh, traction for this patient. So the biggest one is going to be the neurovascular, right? It's going to tell us what's going on with perfusion wise and it's also going to tell us what's going on nerve wise. So when we start talking about neurovascular, we always want to hit on points with our patient, like their pain or if, they're, if it feels warm or if they have pulse, are they able to move things, right? So we're going to be asking them all these questions. When we go into our patient, we're going to ask them, are they having pain, right? So you want to assess it, you want to ask them, what, is, what does it feel like? Where is it? Um, is it new? Has it been going on since, since the injury? Is it new today? You know, anything like that. So what we can do then for pain is then give them some type of medication. So maybe opiates, non-opiates, um, or any other type of medication. Maybe they can get an NSAID depending on the patient. So we want to be able to treat that pain because that pain needs to be under control. And the pain should also correlate basically what's, what's going on with their injury. It shouldn't be something that is outstanding. If it is, you want to take note of it and notify the healthcare provider. Next is going to be the pulse, right? When we have a patient that's possibly in the Buck's traction, right, they have a foot that's in this boot thing. It's got some tension pulling on the bottom of the foot. It's creating that traction for them. We want to ask them, uh, are they having any issues with pain or pulsing, right? Do they feel anything within their feet? And when we're checking for pulse, we're checking bilaterally. We're checking the affected side and the non-affected side. And we're looking for those positive signs of pulses. We're looking for a pulse. Are we able to count it? Is it equal bilateral? Things like that. So we're going to say equal, especially to the non-affected side. Then we're going to say poikilothermia, right? Or does anything feel warm or hot? Because one of our biggest concerns for our patient is a fever, right? So does the area feel warm? Are they feeling hot? Does this patient also take into account have a fever, right? Because then we're looking at our biggest concern, which might be infection, because this patient does have a potential for infection. The next part of the neurovascular we're also going to look into is the paralysis. This is when we're going to say, if we're allowed to, can you wiggle your toes for me or can you move this for me in order to assess to make sure that even though we still had some trauma to the area do we still have some movement right so we're going to ask them like can they move is there any type of movement that they're allowed to do and it has to be within the scope of their injury and patient to patient and you don't want to be asking a patient who has a broken ankle or something that's really low on the tibia near the ankle like can you roll your ankle around like we don't want to be doing that but we do want to make sure that we're able to have movement within the area so we can check the neurovascular status. And then the last one we're going to look through is can you feel this, like the paresthesia. Are you able to feel this? Are you having any pins and needles? What's going on? Because that sensation is going to tell us a lot of what's going on. So can you feel me touching? All right. And then we also want to go into the purpose of traction, which is that alignment. We want to make sure that the, the whole mechanism is set up correctly and our patient is doing uh, what, it, what they need to do in order to keep that traction and alignment correct. So with their alignment, they should be straight or at least in a straight that it should be when, when we had first set it. If there is something that's off, we want to make sure we're notifying the healthcare provider because we don't, if we are resetting that bone into its area and we see a shift or there's something turned that looks off, 
we want to make sure we're telling them because that could tell us that maybe it's healing and it's not healing in that correct pattern or alignment that we would want. We also want our patient more than likely to be supine. There is the rare time that the patient isn't going to be supine, but they should be supine. And they should always be laying flat or at least keeping the head of the bed lower than 30 degrees. And that has to do, again, with that traction, with that skin breakdown, that shearing. We don't want them sliding in the bed down. So we want to make sure that we are all able to keep them as safe as possible. The next big one, and these are the, where the NCLEX really likes to hit on it, is are the weights hanging free? So we talked about the Bucks traction before, where we have basically the injury here, right? Let's say this is the injured foot, and then there's a pulley system with these weights on the bottom, right? So here's our pulley and our weights here. Our weights are creating that tension. So there's two points that are really important. The weights here need to be free, meaning they shouldn't be on the bed, they shouldn't be touching the floor, they shouldn't be partially squished between the mattress and the frame. We are looking for free hanging weights. And that is because that's creating that tension, which is really important because we also gotta check the ropes or the cords or whatever type of um, mechanism that your facility uses in order to create that tension. So that rope here should not be loose it should be nice and taut. It shouldn't be fraying anywhere. You shouldn't see any issues with the rope as well. And if there is issues, we want to make sure that we start talking to our provider and, and letting them know as well. Moving into the skin, again, we want to assess skin breakdown. There's a couple different areas we want to. Obviously, we're going to be checking their backside. You want to check their sacrum and their backside. But you also want to check under all of those straps or if they have pins. Okay, all of those are gonna be telling us that there's maybe something going on. If the straps are showing some breakdown, that means maybe our straps are too tight, and we should also be able to assess that when we do our perfusion and our neurovascular checks. But also with pins, you wanna make sure that the pins, there's not breakdown around them. If there are pins within the skin that are holding the bones in place, if there's breakdown around, that could show that maybe there's an early signs of infection, or there's something else going on that we need to make sure that we are telling our docs and making them come to bedside and assess as well because we don't want this patient to have more issues than they already do. When we are doing this pin site care, what is this? This is again a big NCLEX, so I put this nice big red star there so we can focus on it. Uh, the NCLEX likes to hit on the pin site care and the most important portion of the pin site care is we're looking for infection. All right. This patient has a broken bone. We've now put pins that are potentially from the outside of the body into the bone to hold that bone in place. And that is creating a nice little tunnel area for all this different type of infection to occur. So when we are inspecting the pin site, meaning the area that it's entering the skin, we're looking for signs of infection. And what are those? So it could be any type of new drainage, right? It could be any type of change in the drainage. So maybe it was, you know, maybe a little bloody, a little clear, because it was a newly placed pin, but now it's looking a little murky, it's looking a little cloudy, it's looking a little yellow. You know, we were thinking, mm, maybe this is something's going on and a little infection. We need to look into this. Is there just redness around the pins, right? That's another sign for us. Is there any loosening of the pins? that could tell us that maybe something's going on either with the pin or infection. And then one of those really um, minute points that they like to hit on with the NCLEX as well, but it's a very good one to be aware of if you are a nurse taking care of somebody who's in traction, you wanna look for tenting. And what that means is, is there tenting around the pin? Meaning we have a pin in place and the skin looks like it's almost sticking up a little bit onto the pin and it's not laying flat like it was. So there's either exotic that's been kind of drying and hanging around there or there's something else going on and we need to take note of that because we need to tell our provider and get ahead of this infection if it already is occurring. With all that, in the NCLEX, when they, one thing they like to hit on and one thing that's very important is when we are cleaning our pin sites, we want to make sure that we are using one swab to one pin, meaning we take a swab, whatever it is that your facility uses, usually chlorhexidine or something of that nature, and we clean around the pin. When we clean around the pin, we throw that swab away, get a new swab and go to the next pin. And that's to help with cross-contamination. That's right, we don't want infection from one pin to the other. Because if the first one you swipe has got infection and then you just go down the line, you're just spreading an infection to each pin. So we wanna make sure we're keeping that 
in mind when we are taking an exam, it's always one swabbed, one pin, and we're at the bedside. Make sure we know how many pins we have so we bring the correct number of swabs to the bedside. Then the last thing that we want to make sure we're running home, not only with, our, with us, but with our patient, is we're always looking for the signs of infection. We're always checking the alignment, and then we're also checking bleeding. Remember, this patient has had possibly some type of traumatic event going on, so they do have this traction going on, so they need this alignment. They're bleeding, especially if they have a broken pelvis or a broken femur. We want to keep an eye on what's going on with those bones because we don't want anything else going on along with bleeding. And then the last thing would be the infection, keeping an eye on our patient so they are able to heal through this process. So I hope this made sense. I hope this video really helps you out with your NCLEX and your nursing exams. And as always, until next time.